I don't really like to run any applications as Ruby at all, even though it might be your test server anyway. Please make a separate user for running your little applications. Don't run them as root at any time at all. So I was using root before this point to install all the things because for each and every command that I was executing before this time, I would anyway need to add sudo and it was much faster to just run this whole thing as root. At this point, let's add another user and uh, have that user to be non-root and use this user to run our Node.js app. You add a new user to a system with the help of command add user, and then you type the username. I like to give it the same username as I have on my local workstation, because then when I SSH to that host, I do not need to provide the username. I can just SSH and then put the IP address or the host name. So I'll add the username uh, called Yuri. For yourself, you might choose any username that you like. At this point, you need to decide whether you want to do this user as sudo, right? Whether you want to give this user an add mean right. I will not do that on this server. I want to leave this user without uh, root access because I want to make sure that my application is sandbox. If you still prefer to have this user to be an admin, you can do this. You need to add this user to a group called wheel in order to make it a local admin. Uh, and we'll say add group ag wheel and then username. So I will not execute this command because I don't want to add this user to will group, but you can. Let's become this user. sudo su yuri. So now I'm yuri, right? If you type who am I, you'll see that I'm yuri. Let's go to our home folder. And inside of our home folder, let's set up the keys in order to connect from my local machine to this machine without typing any passwords. So what we'll do is we'll make dear.ssh, we'll make a folder called ssh. Now we need to change a permission on this folder so that only the current user can see it, only Yuri user can see it. So 700 will give all the access to the current user and not to anyone else. Next, let's create a file inside of that ssh folder called authorized keys. And what we'll also do is we'll change the permission to that file to be even more restrictive, 600 instead of 700, because we don't need to execute it. And now inside of this file, we will need to paste the key from my local machine. So I'm going back to a terminal on my local machine and I'm running again this command. I'll take the content of my public key, SSH ID rsa dot pub, right? I can take and copy that from here. And by the way, I'm not afraid at all to share that on video because public key can be shared with anyone, right? I'll open Vim and I'll go to SSH authorized keys. I'll type I to go to insert mode. Now I can insert things in Vim. Oopsie, I just copy pasted the part of the insert word. Okay, so let me take my key back. Where's my key? And let's paste it to the server. Okay, now I type escape and colon WQ. You save and quit, right? So you save this file. Now inside of my server, inside of SSH folder, this authorized keys should have this content, right? When we were creating the new droplet, DigitalOcean did exactly the same thing for the root user, but now we had to do that manually for the new user that we created. So let's test this. Now I press Ctrl D to log out. Now I'm root on the server. Now I log out again to get out of the server, right? Connection closed. Now what I'll do is instead of doing root, I'll just remove root and that will assume my current user, which is Yuri, right? But I can just omit it because it is smart enough to use my uh, OS user. Okay, so I'm now on my server as a non-root Yuri user. And here, let's make sure that I have all the access to Node.js, Node is here, NPM is here, um, Yarn 
is here, should be here, and global modules like HTTP server is also here, right? So this user has all the access to the tools that it needs to run the Node.js application.